Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. In this video, we are going to see what's new jitter wise in Max 8.5. As you probably heard, 8.5 introduced this uh, patching environment to Max called Rainbow, uh, which is something extremely cool. But with uh, Max 8.5, there were also a bunch of jitter goodies. So in this video, we're going to explore what those new features are. First, I'd like to point you to this post in the Max forum from uh, the legendary Rob Ramirez, which recaps all the features that have been added with 8.5. There's a big bunch of stuff. So let's start from the beginning. And uh, one big change is that now we don't have a GL3 engine anymore. This is now called GL Core. So why is this called now GL Core? Because GL3 was a bit uh, um, not so clear as a name because actually Max can support versions of OpenGL higher than 3. So actually everything that is kind of new GL or the latest GL stuff, it's normally called GL Core. So Max reflects that now by changing the name of the engine to GL Core. Also, uh, GL Core is now the default engine, so GL2 it's not anymore the default engine, but GL Core. So when you create a new patch and you go into the options, to the max options, and uh, so here preferences, you will see that the GL uh, graphics engine is by default set to GL Core. So you don't have to set it anymore manually from GL2. And also, Basically, all the features that were on GL2, like GGL Volume, for example, now these also exist in GL Core. So if I create now a GGL Volume object, uh, before Max 8.5, it would give me an error, but uh, now this works very nicely. So if we open the Help Patcher, we can see the new GGL Volume implementation, which is slightly different from the GL2 implementation, but it's definitely cool. So that's the first big change. We have now a uh, GL core instead of GL3. Now there are also some new examples in the GL core example patch. So if we go here, if we go into extras and GL core examples, it will open this patch and here we can see a bunch of new stuff. So these things were already all there as far as I remember. Even this wobbly word pad, which is absolutely cool. This is something so cool. But this is kind of things that were already there. But now we have a new PBR and IBL demo, where PBR stands for physically based rendering and IBL stands for uh, image based lightning. So why image based? Because it means now that we can use environment texture, an environment map, which is basically a texture, which is a cube map, so encompasses all our environment. And this image will be used to create reflections on the three objects in our scene. So we can change the amount of roughness, for example, on the object, which means how much they're going to reflect. A reflectness, a roughness of zero will make the 3D objects extremely reflective and the metalness also changes how much this material is kind of metal-like. So very cool demo that shows you how we can use uh, uh, the PBR object to create very realistic image-based light renderings. As you can see, you can see the reflections of the window here on the floor, and uh, this is extremely cool. Uh, we now also have texture support for the inputs of GGL PBR, which allow us to have, for example, a dynamic changing height for the objects. So really cool stuff. And if something in this collection of examples looks new to you, I encourage you to visit it, uh, visit this examples patch because there's really some cool stuff that was introduced first when uh, GL3 was created. And uh, it's uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, it's really worth uh, giving it a look. Now, if we go in this other page from the Cycling74 website, which is the releases page, and we can see what's, uh, what are the changes with the Max 8.5 release version. We can see that apart from stuff related to the audio objects and audio system, there is also a lot of uh, Jitter related um, new features. For example, we have now a GGL environment object. So the GGL environment object is a bit like the cube map object 
but you can load open EXR files directly into it and you can use it with a GGL Skybox object. So instead of connecting a cube map to the Skybox, you will directly have several of these GGL environment objects and you can activate them singularly in order to change the Skybox you want to be applied. And the object will do some calculations that are required for the GGL PBR object to produce the reflections. So if you are working with several GGL PBR objects in your scene, I totally encourage you to use the GGL environment because it will make some uh, performance improvements compared to what GGL cube map will do. So that's another cool addition of Max 8.5. Now going back to our article, we can see that there is a new entry to our Jitter tools, which is the GGL text mold object. So if we go in Max, and we go into extras and jitter tools, we open the launching patch. We can see that there is now a new object which is called GGL text mold. So if we click here, it will open the help file. And what this object does is that allows you to create 3D text uh, with a single GGL text mold object. So before when there was only GGL text, to have several text, on the screen, you would have to create a lot of GGL text objects, but with GGL text mult, you can basically treat text as you would work with GGL multiple. So this allows us to have a lot of text in our visuals by simply using matrices as input to generate position, scale, and rotation, like we will do with GGL multiple. For example, I created here a demo patch for that, which recreates this sort of matrix visuals. So let's give it a look. So this is possible with the GGL text mold because I'm just using a bunch of matrices here to set the position of the letters. And then I'm using the color set uh, passed as a matrix to set basically which letters are illuminated and which one gets darker. So this is only possible through GGL text mold. Before it was not really possible to do that. So big improvement for all the text freaks out there. And I know there are many of those because I often got help requests on how to do something like that. So now this is natively possible. Cool. Now going on, we got a very cool bunch of new passes, effects for the GGL pass object. Here from this article actually, which by the way, uh, it's all going to be linked in the description. Uh, we can actually open directly this stuff in Max. So it will open the patch here in Max. And as you can see, this is a very cool new effect, which is called, which is basically a fog effect. This is a post-processing effect, so you don't need to care about creating your scene in a, any particular way, apart that you need to have the GGL PBR or GGL material attached to your objects. Otherwise, it's all going to be done automatically. As you can see, we have here two different fogs. We have one for the general fog and here we can give it an altitude so this will only be the ground fog and this will be kind of the sky fog or something so we can change then the altitude of our ground fog we can change its density and we can even get some glitchy effects so that's really cool in case you want to create the, like a slender man game uh, thing in max now you can do it and have a very cool uh, spooky fog effect Nice. So let's see what other passes we got. Uh, we got some very cool global illumination with temporal screen space ambient occlusion. So that's going to be cool. Let's check it out. Let's enable it. And so what this is doing is basically accumulating um, frames to get data from each frame and then use this data to create reflections on those objects. So as you can see, these 3D objects are reflecting the light bouncing from the floor, which is really cool. And there is a bunch of parameters here that we can modify. For example, the intensity of the ambient occlusion, which uh, simulates where the light is, uh, uh, simulates some sort of shadow, so where the light is not really going to, uh, to arrive. And then let's see, we got the radius of the ambient occlusion. We have how many samples. And I guess the more samples we use, the slower is going to be the rendering because it needs to iterate through more frames uh, for each frame. So you can try to change those parameters and see what fits best for your system. 
Uh, for example, we can only visualize the ambient occlusion. This is very cool. We see where actually the light is gonna hit and where it's not gonna hit. Ah, oh, this is really cool. I really need to play more around with this stuff. Now, if we want to check out all the passes, all the new passes that we got here, we just need to create a GGL pass object and open its reference page. And then we can see all the passes that we got built inside. So this we can see, this is the ambient occlusion that we were just shown. And then there is another one which uses screen space reflections, which I think is slightly different. So this is the one without the screen space reflection. And this is the one that will also apply the screen space reflection. So one will only apply the ambient occlusion and the other one will also apply the reflections thing. So in the pass reference, you can see all the passes, all the built-in passes, and you can also see how to use the TGL pass in more detail. And then going on with the article from Rob, okay, we can see that GGL environment was actually mentioned. So it says that it works like a GGL light, basically, which means it's tied to a context. And all the objects that are in this context, which uses an environment map, will use the one that is currently activated. So really cool stuff. And then another new thing is that we now got GLTF file PBR material support for GGL model which gives uh, much better results when rendering those model files. So we can see a demo video here, where here is this without using PBR and this is with using PBR. So as you can see, there are all the reflections on the object. So I made a little example here for GGLTF objects, how to use them. And so basically, as you can see, we can just um, load a GLTF file and we can download those from the internet. It's usually uh, websites that allow you to download the 3D models. We'll also have an option to download the GLTF version. And then we can see how this object is interacting with environment map. So if we use an environment map, we can see how the reflections are affecting the object. Now, this uh, 3D object is not really reflective in many ways since it's like a flying turkey or something but as you can see from the demo here if you use objects that have a texture with the, uh, the reflections set higher then uh, the objects will reflect the environment map and it mostly will look extremely cool so i think this is it uh for links to the example patch uh, check out the gl core example and gdr tool extra patches and the gl pass reference page as we just did i'm uh, super excited about all these new features and i hope these a uh, little video made you excited as well. So don't waste any time and go check them out. Uh, if you want to download the patches with the matrix text thing, which I sh showed before, you can download it from my Patreon. And I will take the opportunity to give a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. It really means a lot to me. And I will see you all in the next video. Have fun. Ciao, ciao.